We're gonna talk about Bobby's story. And he is hiking the Appalachian Trail and it's a really big deal and we're here to tell you why it's such a big deal. Uh, and we're gonna do it together because sometimes it's hard for Bobby to kind of think of what is important. And a lot of the things he just doesn't remember because he was on such high doses of medication to help him forget that he just doesn't have that as part of his story. Uh, he's heard me talk about it a lot. Bobby is 21 years old and well, tell me why this is such a big deal that you're hiking the Appalachian Trail. I am hiking the Appalachian Trail. Um, it's such a big deal because I have a single ventral heart defect. It's half of a heart mm -hmm. where I don't have the entire heart system that everyone else does. Um, it's harder for me to walk, do any form of exercise, um, and it's definitely harder for me to do the Appalachian Trail because of that. The Appalachian Trail is such a challenging trail, and any exercise is harder for you to do than the average person who has a whole heart just under 2,200 miles um, and with very difficult, challenging terrain. Everything's rocks and roots, right, Bob? Um, yeah. <laughs> they had done a four-hour ultrasound of his heart and found out that he had some abnormalities. Four hours, yeah. So these, these chambers are called ventricles. The lower ventricles are the powerhouse of the heart. They are pumped. They really get the blood all over the place. So on the right side, we have the upper storage chamber and the smaller ventricle. When your heart pumps, that pumps the blood to the lungs. So you see your lungs are here and here, your heart's right here, doesn't have to go very far. So it's not as strong of a pump. The left side, what it does is pump the blood to the whole rest of the body. So it has to pump it down to the legs, the feet, the brain, it sends it everywhere. So it's the powerhouse when you talk about the left ventricle, it's the workhorse. And his left ventricle did not form, didn't form properly. Whatever the reason was, he doesn't have a left ventricle. So what they had to do was use what they have. So what he has is a right ventricle that pumps well. So they had to use that to pump to his whole body. And the way they do that is by a series of surgeries. And the first surgery was to put in an artificial shunt so that they could get blood to the lungs, send him home, little baby, let him grow until he was big enough for the first surgery. So he did that and he did very well with the first surgery. 10 days in the hospital, came home with a feeding tube, and at three months old, they said, oh, he's big enough now, let's have him come in for the first of the corrective surgeries. Not the shunt, but the corrective ones. So he came in for that one, and that was when we had lots and lots of trouble. He had every complication you can imagine. So Bobby was septic, um, two and three bugs at a time, and on some of the most harsh medications you can think of to save his life. His vocal cord was paralyzed because the nerve was severed. So in time, he was able to talk and cry, but it was hoarse and very light. We couldn't hear him very well. <coughs> and that cough right there is part of the vocal cord issue that we still have. <coughs> um, so that Make was one of the throat. things. <laughs> the other thing is from all the medication that he was on, it damaged the nerves in his ear, ears. So Bobby, tell him about your hearing loss. Um, so my right ear, because it's the easier one to explain, it's like almost completely deaf, uh, which has some goods and some bads to it. Uh, my left ear, I can hear the highs, mm -hmm. but not the lows. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so my right ear, the reason why it's kind of good is that when I go to bed, I can sleep up with the right ear up and not hear anything and go to sleep faster than normal people. Because <laughs> you block <laughs> which, it all yeah, out. <laughs> which I find is kind of funny, but I also kind of awesome. <laughs> but you'll notice too, Bobby puts his head down when he talks. It helps close the vocal cord. So the vocal yeah. cord issue, um, we had surgery about four years ago. One of the only people there, I think there were two or three people in the world that did a vocal cord nerve re -enervation. They would take a nerve from a, another muscle that was over by the vocal cord, 
that you could spare. And he attached that to the damaged nerve, the end of the one that was cut. And he, Bobby speaks very well now, but at times, like you'll see, he'll put his head down and has the cough still and will uh, get a little raspy if he's dry or something like that. Still can't yell like you and I can, but uh, has a, a really good voice. So you'll notice that on some of the recordings. I can't yell much. So that is the first surgery. The second surgery came home. We spent probably four years trying to put him back together again. At a year old, he couldn't even roll over. Um, the other thing that happened from that surgery is he never got rid of the tube. When he came home from the hospital, he was completely dependent on the tube for feeding and couldn't suck or eat at all. It took us six years to get him to eat because his mouth was so used to not having that stimulation. When Bobby was five, he went in for his final heart surgery. Again, he had a lot of complications, including being septic multiple times, and he was on the respirator for two more months but I think he really wanted to come home and he fought hard to just be home with his family. But after that surgery, he was able to exercise without turning blue anymore. So as he got older and stronger, we were able to challenge him with more difficult forms of exercise. And it's really only been in the last year that he's been able to push it the way he has been with the hiking. Each year we have to go back to Yale for a cardiac workup and that includes a stress test, an ultrasound of his heart, which is also known as an echo, and an EKG. So really not too bad from where we started. So those are some of the things that he's had to live with. So tell me about your legs. Um, so my legs are uneven. We have to send them to someone to cut the shoe and make a, uh, make a lift bigger so I can have my feet even while I'm walking. So when he only had one part of his heart that was sending blood to the rest of his body, one side of his body didn't get the amount of blood that it needed as the other side. So one side of his body doesn't have the same amount of hair as the other side. One side of his body actually is shorter than the other side by about, uh, it's almost two inches. It's about an inch and a half or so. So he has shoes that we have to send away and they get modified. modified. They, they take out the middle part of it, add a big wedge to it, and it lifts him up so that now his hips are even and his legs are even. So when he takes his shoes off, he goes in the shower, he's lopsided. When he nice. was in the hospital, he had a stroke during that time. And we didn't know that until years later when we went to Boston Children's Hospital and they asked some questions and it turns out that he had a seizure and that seizure was a stroke. There are a lot of things that happen cognitively, mentally because of that. So things like planning things out, um, trying to troubleshoot problems, uh, learning issues. So, you know, tell me about how that is for you. Um, it's very slow. I have to take time to think about what I'm doing all the time. Uh, when I'm hiking or not even when I'm, uh, at the house packing up to go hiking, I have to think about how to pack and what to wear and what the weather is going to be like all the time. Mm -hmm. um, how, how many layers I have to do. And to remember water and to remember food yeah. and all those things that we all have trouble remembering them. Like you really need guidance and help to put all this stuff together. Along the way, exercise has always been really tough for him. And ever since he was a baby, I've always wanted him to be included in everything that everyone else did. So he had a lot of ride on things. He had things like yeah. quads. Some people donated them to us. Uh, we had a couple of different ones for little kids. He was four or five years old and using a quad. Um, we would take him places and like we went to Disney World and he had to use a wheelchair to get around because it was just way too much for him to walk everywhere. He was in Special Olympics and you were swimming with Special Olympics. You were on a regular town team, but it was really a challenge to be on a town team. So Bobby's always been really exposed to a lot of athletics, but could never do them at a level where he could keep up with anyone else. So tell me about your, your hike and your hiking, the AT. I finished all of Connecticut. Um, it's hard, hiking is hard, but I'm getting used to it and it's not as hard as when I started. Um, I'm building up endurance. Right now there's snow on the ground, <laughs> so it's kind of harder because I, sh I snowshoe 
And that's harder? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard. <laughs> um, but hiking has been all right. Yeah, hiking's been all right. That's been good. <laughs> we tried snow for snowshoes for the first time yesterday. That added a whole nother layer of difficulty. Oh, yes. But we do a lot of biking. So one of the other things we've done to help Bobby keep up the exercise, which is so important for his heart, and it's just a whole lot of fun, is that now he has an electric assist bike. So tell him about the bike. Oh, it has five different pedal assists to it. Um, and... I usually like turbo because half the time I'm lazy and I want it to give me all the power. But no, you, when you pedal it, it gives you assistance. So you're not all, you're not pedaling as much as you need to on a regular bike. Mm -hmm. It's easier now than it was on a normal bike. And now with the electric assist bike, we're trying to keep up with him. He's uh, having a lot of fun with that, so that's been a great thing. And we he's always been a swimmer. We try to swim as much as we can, and the hiking has added a whole new level to his ability to exercise. So we're thinking about getting a camper van and hiking the entire Appalachian Trail. And then, uh, it's like, when at certain times, like when it's raining or something, we can have a place to sleep. Um, or stay in the van. Uh, I want a Mercedes Sprinter because I love the inside of it and just the layout of stuff. Um, I think it's kind of fun having a bathroom in it and then having a bedroom in it and a kitchen. Yep. And driving from Georgia to Maine. Yeah, so what we're hoping is that um, Bobby's father, John, my husband, well, he can't hike like we can. He has knee issues, but he can hike maybe yeah. one day a week or something. And he loves to bike. So if we have the sprinter van, we'll go to different places and Bobby and I will be up in the mountains hiking. John will be driving along the AT, having fun on his bike. And then whenever we need to come down off the mountains or off the trail, we'll be able to stay in the camper van and you know have the luxuries of almost being in a hotel room, but being in the van. So we're really looking forward to doing that. Bobby has... I think I'm really excited for that because it gives me something to do besides school. Uh, it can get my brain, like my head going and be like, oh, look at this. Like this is a, a I don't know, a Mercedes van that I like the interior of. Like, I think we should do this. Yeah. Um, it's a project, a fun project. To it think is about. a really fun Bobby's project. Bobby's been dreaming about this kind of van for what? 10, 15 years, yeah. I think ever since you were about five years old. Yeah. And now we have the reason that we actually want to do it. I'm in school. Uh, I'm studying computer in forensics? No, computer. Computer science. Computer science. Um, I'm basically learning the insides of a computer and how they work and what they do and the OS system. Um, which is something that I want to do like for a living when I go out of college is to work on computers and work um, and like get my hands on computers and see how, see what they do and see like what parts are for which, mm -hmm. uh, how you can, how a battery works or what, what like a motherboard does or something. Mm -hmm. What are your other interests? I really like um, video stuff, mm -hmm. like watching YouTubers. Um, I like my car a lot. Tell, tell me about your car. Tell them about your car. <laughs> my car. I bought it in the middle of a pandemic. It is a 2020 Honda Fit. It's blue because that's my favorite yeah, color. Your col yeah, yeah your shirt. it's just my like shirt that. Blue. Yeah. So Bobby worked washing cars. I worked washing cars and I worked at the movie theater. Mm -hmm. Yep. For four years to mm -hmm. save up for that car. And so he bought most of them, most of it himself. Uh, so he's really proud of owning a car and being able to uh, say that he did it. Tell me about your family. <laughs> uh, so I have two sisters and one brother. Hudson is over there. Uh, he's sleeping right now. He is a golden, he is hyper. 
Uh, and he's six years old? He's seven. Seven? Yeah. Wow. Um, Bentley uh, is a fuzzball. He's a standard <laughs> poodle. We don't cut him like a poodle. Um, <clears throat> and he, we grow him out. We grow him out so he uh, has a lot of hair right now. Mm -hmm. So he stays warm in the winter because yeah. it gets really cold. And and Bentley is our hiking dog. Bentley comes with us a lot. He's got a great personality. He's Bentley wonderful comes on with the us trail. all the time. He sleeps in the tent with us. Um, he's he's definitely with us all the time. So he's a great hiking dog, and he's ten. So we hope that you guys enjoy the hiking that we do and watching uh, watching Bobby do yeah. the whole at.